everyone, and welcome to the game I would have just lost, Don't Scream. A really cool little challenge game that just entered Early Access, in which our goal is to play through a randomized and unpredictable horror experience without screaming. I'm sure we'll be getting some for the scare reel in this one, but the thing is, I don't usually tend to scream when playing horror games. Which probably sounds rich coming from me, but hear me out. Normally, I don't scream when I'm playing on my own. But there's just something about commentating and already being speaking when something happens that makes it so much harder to hold it in. So, for the purposes of a let's play, we're just in the right spot where it's going to be difficult for me. Alright, but the objective is survive 18 minutes without screaming. However, there's a catch. Time only progresses when you move, and all scares are unpredictable. Now we've got the microphone calibration set fairly low so that I can project my voice enough to sound interesting. However, you'll hear that as soon as I start hitting those high tones, we start clipping the lines. So it's not going to be it's not going to be super easy. Even a loud gasp could set it off. I'm really nervous because not many games have this as a premise and. If they're that certain that it'll be that difficult to do, I really wonder what it's going to throw at me. Well, let's uh, get started. I see we're also going for a sort of like VHS aesthetic, which is, ooh, kind of interesting. Oh, these graphics are actually quite nuts. And... I've fallen over. Oh, hmm, I guess I clipped it right then and there. Huh, maybe I need to calibrate that a little more. Or just maybe get a little bit closer to the microphone. Yeah, actually, that makes sense. Let's try that. Hmm, uh, October 31st, 1993. Oh, we're going for a real Blair Witch sort of feeling then, are we? And you'll see as soon as we start walking... That's when the clock starts ticking down. So really the best way to go about this is going to be to just constantly hold down that W key, eh? Now, it's said to explore the woods as much as we like, and that these woods are huge, so I really wonder if there's not going to be anything we can run into. I'm seeing... I'm seeing a glow in the woods over there and a cabin over on my right. So we'll try and hit the glow first and see what's beyond. Uh, we can't sprint, we are limited to walking, so there's not gonna be any running away from danger. Oh, it's a, it's a drink machine wedged in the ground. Can we investigate? Doesn't seem like there's anything to be done with it. Ah, oh, this is giving me sort of similar vibes to like, uh, not Escape the Back Rooms, what was the other one? Uh, oh, uh, f f The Complex. Oh, and this game is absolutely gorgeous to look at. Look, we've got this abandoned house, this car all overgrown with moss, the door left hanging open for who knows how long. And a bunch of crows and or ravens sat perched ominously on the overhang. Okay, let's go see what's in store in the haunted house. Ah, oh, it's like my childhood nightmare is brought to life. I swear I just heard a step from inside somewhere. What sucks is that to speak into the microphone like this, I have to lean forward. Somebody's inside. No, turn on the light! <laughs> okay, so it's very, very sensitive. Very sensitive. Alright, I'm gonna have to steal myself even more than that. Okay, I've gone ahead and toned it down by just one more percent because, well, I actually tried another attempt after that last scare, and literally just by, like, hitting a certain note in my voice, I died, so clearly I needed it toned down just a little bit more than that. I 
Haven't seen it flash on the screen like that before, I don't think. Hang on, is it just not picking me up? At, okay, it's picking me up. But I, I, I want to go back in that other direction. I want to see what's in that house. But I have no idea which way I went before. Is there something over here, perhaps? Wow, this game actually takes quite... This game takes quite a bit of horsepower. Hmm, I'm seeing something on my right and something on my left. Let's start with the left. Oh, that looks like it might be like an overturned silo or something, or some sort of pipe. Wait. Are those like airline seats? Is this going to be a crashed plane? Hmm. Oh yeah, I think so. Is that is that going to be the wing up on the hill? Uh, I, I wish we could move a little bit faster. You know, not that we could deplete the timer faster, just that we could move a little faster. Oh, wait, and that appears to be another flashing drink machine right there. Do these things maybe appear between all elements in order to try and, like, lead us in? Those are hanging bodies from the tail. Unmistakably. Okay, there's Blair Witchy shenanigans going on in these forests. And I do not have the ability to look all the way up, it seems. Don't know why that's the case. Uh, if we travel to the other end of the fuselage, can we maybe get inside? Uh, once again, really wish I could sprint. This game is in very early access, and they're very open about that in all stages of its documentation. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's something that gets tweaked later on. Alright, anticipate jump scare. Come on, turn your light on. Turn your light on. Turn your light on. I must be stuck on something because it's not advancing time. Yeah, I can't see anything in there. And it seems like the forest itself is getting darker. Listen to that siren off in the distance. Look at all that noise on the screen. And the way that light interacts with the environment. Oh, we are at Siren Head Alert 5. Oh, graphically, this game is so creepy all its own. I I'm really glad that it's actually putting us in the mood because... I feel like we need to be in the mood to receive jump scares, you know? Otherwise, it just doesn't really work correctly. Uh, but I feel like... I, I don't know if this is really running all that well. And there aren't really graphics options. There's just high quality and low quality. Maybe I'll be changing that in a bit. We'll see. After I die next, we'll see. Get ready. Here comes something. I'm sorry, it's just when I'm anticipating a jump scare, I really have to just stop talking. There's something up ahead. There's somebody up ahead. Oh, perhaps somebody holding a lantern. Oh, and just like that, that disembodied light is gone. Uh, like a witch trying to guide me to its hut. I'll tell you what, we'll follow the only leads we've got. I can hear, like, something crunching up ahead, like somebody stepped on a twig. And echoey whispers in the forest. Wow, this is like, this really is like a Blair Witch game. But we haven't found we haven't found any real structures since the plane itself. <laughs> and every time the light dims that way, I, I just sort of mentally prepare myself, just sort of stop talking a little bit in order to be ready. 
I've always said that I don't really tend to scream so much in, like, normal play, that I scream more in the course of a Let's Play because I'm already talking. This is the place to put that to the test, really. Scream over on the left. Uh, let's get towards you. You just lost the game. I feel like I should be hearing one of those, like, Hunger Games cannons go off. Hello. Yeah, so, I, I feel like, I feel like it's weird that I'm hardly seeing anything on the levels at all, because I only turned it down by 1%. So maybe, maybe I've got it tuned just a little bit too low, but then again, the other ones seem too high. Part of it probably has to do with the settings on my end as well, like on the side of Windows. Hello, dark shadowy figures. I'm going to walk into you just so I get the jump scare. Huh, that's neat. I mean, I I'm wondering if maybe it's not going to send stronger stuff my way as we go. But so far, it seems like there's a good mix of, like, bleh jump scares. I was really worried I'd clip the mic by saying that. And things that are just meant to make you gasp as you turn around, which is really interesting. It seems like there's going to be, like, a nice variety of scares within this. And really reassuringly, it seems like this would be the kind of game I would enjoy even without the challenge aspect. But we're getting quite down there, 11 and a half minutes to go. And these woods are supposed to be quite large. Now it did say that the scares are unpredictable, uh, but it seems like, like, I mean, we've got the birds launching multiple times. I don't know if the structures within the woods are randomized or not. But I think it's real cool to see the comeback of a sort of game that you're supposed to sit your friends down and just laugh at them from behind their back. Or try to sabotage them by yelling, although that would defeat the spirit of the game. I don't know, I, I feel like it's the kind of thing that would have been popular. Like, if this existed in the 90s, this would have been all the rage, you know? I don't know what it is, where it, it feels like fear and friends just go together so well. I've actually read before that it's believed that, uh, that laughter is an evolutionary mechanism meant to show other members of your tribe that there is no danger. Like, for example, if you, uh, if you heard, like, rustling in the bushes or something, and somebody goes to investigate while the others are watching with bated breath from the fire, that when the person who went to investigate starts laughing, that's how you know they found out it was just a chipmunk or something. It's real interesting to think about from that perspective, I think, and why it goes so well with party games. I mean, it's really, I suppose it's almost the digital equivalent of Bloody Mary, right? Sending someone in to say the name three times in the mirror, believing the witch will appear behind you. In this case, I'm hoping we don't run into the Blair Witch, but uh, well, there's only so many comparisons I can draw to that property before it gets old. I'm really trying to keep myself talking here because I know that uh, I, I know that if I clam up entirely, it's going to become too easy. Uh, but then again, maybe that'll be worth a challenge run. Yeah, there's been all kinds of noises, but what if I just... Uh, let's go towards you. Let's go towards that scream. Actually, I, I didn't get a very good look at the figure we found in the cabin, but I couldn't help but be reminded of uh, the ghost girl in uh, a game I played a little while back called The Gap. I don't think it's a... Okay, that, that, that creeped me out a little bit. I almost let out a gasp on that one. Oh, there's just something about the way it's mixed. The, uh... Th this isn't going to be the right phrase for it, but the sort of vocal fry in that, how... Yep, here we are. And there you go. Oh, you're leading me deeper in. This is... 
so creepy. Okay, yeah, that only... I That only didn't get me because I knew to prepare for it. There's something else there. And just like that, it's gone. Oh, but it sounds like it's moving behind me somewhere. Okay, we're in we're in the home stretch. We've gotta we we we've gotta be ready for this. Uh, but once again, like my instinct is to just stop talking entirely, just look down and hold the W key. But uh, that doesn't exactly make for interesting gameplay, does it? Ah, uh, oh no. Come on! Ah, oh, just saying oh no caused me to lose after the jump scares didn't get me. Ah, oh, I've got to be mindful of that. See, it's weird because it, it doesn't seem like I'm getting anywhere close and then just all of a sudden I'm clipping the line. Hmm, Mini Mart Homestead Farm. And Cemetery. Okay, let's head to the homestead. I'm guessing that's the direction that I walked off in in the beginning. And I want to explore that house. Ah, oh, see, that's the cool thing. I'm really glad that it's not just randomizing everything, at least not seemingly. Because it means that I get to actually explore this map that is actually quite beautifully crafted. Let's head in this direction, I guess, until we see that light. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna turn down the thing any further because I don't think that's the problem. I think it's like hitting a certain tone of voice that is pushing me over the edge. So we're not really gonna gain anything by putting it down farther. Huh, then again, maybe it was the farm I meant to head towards. Cause that just looks like a parked camper. Alright, what horrors have we got in store in the camping vehicle of doom? Are we going to actually be able to go inside? No, but you will try to get me with the blaring of the horn. Oh, we've got a corpse on the ground and it automatically pixelates the face. Oh, that's actually cool from a found footage perspective because it sort of implies that we're seeing this after the tape has already been found. Which is kind of the whole idea of found footage, but, I mean, so rarely do they actually call attention to the fact that our perspective isn't the one shooting the video. Well, let's keep going. And now I'm sort of projecting my own sort of headcanon story onto this. And that we are the victim of some witch who traps victims here. And she gets to keep their soul in exchange for the challenge of, like, if they can... If they can make their way 18 minutes in this forest without screaming, they'll gain their freedom. I horribly butchered the structure of that sentence, but you, you see what I'm getting at. Just saw a really strange shadow creep across the bottom of the frame. Right. Do not stop holding W for anything. Oh, and it seems that that siren will begin to blare no matter what. Always as soon as night falls. Last time I lost with... Uh, let's, let's try and break our record at a minimum. Last time I lost at six minutes remaining, I think. Although, I will defend myself. I didn't really lose... Oh my god, that animation is so creepy. Oh, the way you so smoothly crawl out of that well. And let me guess, there will be something for us if we decide to take a peek inside, right? No, surprisingly no. In fact, it actually seems to be entirely filled with dirt and leaves. There's them birds again. That's not even as scary as real life startling birds. I mean, those things produce like a sonic boom when they take off, don't they? Especially in a whole group of them. I've been startled by them many times. Hello, Mrs. Witch Lady, or Ghost Light in the Woods. Oh, it actually looks like a flashlight that's like pointed in a certain direction. Hmm. 
But once again, as we approach, it's gone. Okay, what? It's eight more minutes until we're, we're at our record? I think we can do it. See, I always talk about, whenever people, like, accuse me of being fake in my reactions, my response to that is that I allow myself to feel what a horror game is trying to make me feel. It's only now that I'm basically forced to try and do the opposite. And that's the thing. Sure, there are YouTubers who do over-the-top reactions or keep at it for longer than they should, specifically because it makes for more entertaining like content for the low attention span crowd but the thing is I feel like if you are always doing what I'm doing now and trying to steal yourself to not be taken by scares you're only cheating yourself out of the experience that you paid for I mean you came here to be scared did you not in a way I feel like people who have that mindset almost have like the reverse mindset of that game, where this game feels that it's its responsibility to jump scare the player. Some people feel like it's their responsibility to not be scared by the thing that's in front of them. I'm hearing stuff on the left and it does seem like there's a path, so maybe we could start following this for a while. Uh, it's been so long since I've actually walked around in the woods at night, and it's generally not a good idea because, you know, woods are large and it is very, very easy to get lost even during the day. Uh, but all this is reminding me of is that I would like to go camping again. I haven't been, like, camping camping in such a long time. Really not since I was a kid. But I mean, if you get a group of people who are really into the creepy and comfy, <laughs> this is the kind of game that, if anything, just makes me wish I had uh, invested more uh, invested more interest into Boy Scouts. Wow, this game really... This game isn't actually very... Oh, careful. This game really isn't very dense on the scares. I, I mean, I'm sure part of that is randomized, but... Hello, I see something up ahead. And look, I understand that. It's actually very important that it not be too dense, because then it'll desensitize the player too quickly. We've learned that with certain Gary's Mod maps, that if you if it's just a constant parade of jump scares that aren't built up to with any sort of mood or atmosphere, it really does stop landing, even to the most sensitive players. I couldn't tell if I just saw a light off to my right for just the briefest moment. Uh, but it seems like we are entering sort of a clearing right now. I'm just constantly glancing over at Audacity because uh, I'm worried that in this speaking voice, because I usually have to project a fair bit, especially since I'm using a new mic and I'm not really sure what the, what the range is, what the capability is. I'm really worried it just won't sound good uh, once all the post-processing is done. I mean, I've still got to do noise reduction. That's always a little destructive. Usually add some bass, throw some compressor on in, uh, in Vegas. Here you are. We've seen a lot of the same things, actually. But then again, maybe, like, finding the ghost girl. Maybe that's part of, like, the script... Or, not scripted, maybe that's part of, like, the random scares, while some of the set pieces are more concrete. Oh, look at this, we're getting close to something. Ooh, an arrow. Oh, I'm playing through Alan Wake 2 right now, where are we getting close to one of the Lantern Lady's stashes? Oh, what a way to spend a Halloween in the 90s, huh? Almost looks like it's leading us towards... Yep, I see you crawling over there. I'm just going to assume that nothing can actually get me. Oh, that was sort of creepy, though. You just sort of uh, crawling beside the sign like it was pointing to you. 
All right, what happens if we do travel in this direction? <laughs> you know what's funny is I'm pretty sure I've heard that, uh... I'm pretty sure I've heard that scream sound effect before, but... <laughs> comedic effect. That one I haven't heard before. Oh, very dark. Waiting for something to appear at any moment. Oh. And that's more of a cliff. Okay, walking backwards does work. Eight and a half minutes. We're so close to our record. I see you twirling over there in the trees. Oh, that's creepy. The way you hang down like that, you at first register as, like, moving branches or dead leaves. If I had been paying attention, you might have gotten me. <coughs> hmm, so the other thing doesn't always hit right away. Oh, you're like a big spider. I mean, you're getting stuck, early access and all. You know, there was a there was a warning uh, when I first started this game up that said, like, if you're arachnophobic, be ready for that. So I suppose now we know why. There was also a... Uh, I believe this is a two-man team. There was also a message from one of the developers uh, at the start of the game. So that was kind of nice. I don't know if that'll still appear uh, on subsequent launches. Hello, you. Oh, you almost got me. I, I really need to stop doing those, like, long, drawn-out sounds with my voice. That's how you accidentally hit the high tones that are enough to set this off. And I do think that it's maybe going to start ramping up the scariness as we go. I think it's really neat how... I feel like a lot of people might end up uh, dismissing this game as YouTuber bait. Which is not really a... Are we seeing, like, symbols projected on the ground in light? That's not really a label that I like for games. I feel like that's kind of reductive. Only because I, I try to appreciate games for what they are, and not for what the, like, s like the talk and discussion surrounding them are. Uh, which is why I played games like... Uh, what was that when I played? Uh, Poppy Playtime and uh, Roblox? Because I knew that those would be controversial choices, and I suspect that this one, to an extent, will be as well. But I, I try to just judge things for what they are, you know? Like, I mean, if I played something and I enjoyed it, I I'm not gonna knock it just because there's, like, all kinds of preconceived thoughts surrounding it, you know? Huh, what is this? Oh. Is that like a beached ship? Uh, by the way, we've also beaten our record. And we're very, very close to actually... Oh. Can we not get close? Hmm, that's a little weird. Have we reached, like, the edge of the map? Uh, we can walk around this side. Oh, this is so creepy, though. Not just a boat, but an entire beached, like, cargo ship or something just in the middle of the woods. Oh, the imagery in this game is absolutely fantastic. Like I said, I'm really enjoying the fact that this is just a fun game to explore, even independent of the premise itself. In fact, if we beat it this time, we're actually probably going to try again just to see what else is here. All right, five more minutes. We can do five more minutes. Just gotta make it a nice leisurely stroll. This is no different from when I explore the various state parks around me. Well, actually, it's very different for a number of reasons, but you know what I mean. I can hear crumbling rocks over on my left. Look at the way these branches all jitter in the light of my camera. I'm actually, I'm extremely impressed with the way it's handling the lighting here. 
I mean, this is such an important part of doing horror in the woods. Is the way things are illuminated as you progress through, as you get closer. Because, I mean, it's the woods. There's so many things here to catch your light. And all of it basically comes down to noise, visual noise to distract you. Until something appears that isn't. Hmm. Been quite a while since we've seen anything, and it's starting to make me wonder if it doesn't have, like, some kind of cheaty ace in the hole that it deploys once you get down to, like, ten seconds or something like that. Oh, do I see something ahead? Nope. Just a jutting branch on this fallen tree. Is that what this is? Yep. Uh, the way the camera sways as you turn your view from left to right it makes it feel like you're wandering sluggishly through like a dream or something. We are in quite a wide, unprecedented clearing. It kind of reminds me of like the legends of like the Devil's Tramping Ground and such. One bare patch in an otherwise lush forest where nothing seems to grow. We are so very, very close, and I'll be really disappointed if we lose now. I don't think there are any, like, difficulty settings anything for, like... Oh, we're... Uh, we made our way all the way back around straight to the ship. Okay. <laughs> wow, it would have been real annoying if I had been gotten by that or by my little... <laughs> I've really got to learn to stop making such exclamations. What are you going to do? I hear that whispering, but I'm still holding W. Steal myself. Steal myself. I've got my volume up high and everything. If I had been speaking right at that moment, it 100% would have gotten me. It is taking all my mental faculties to not scream right now. But we've got less than two minutes to go. I suppose it is somewhat fair to call it YouTube bait in that it almost... I mean, it, it may be different for different people, but... Yep, you're behind me. You're right behind me. It may not work as well if you're not continually speaking while you play. Which doesn't require YouTube, but it certainly helps. The sound design is also quite excellent, I must say. Come on, do it. Yep. Ah, uh, see, that's something cool. It, it recognizes... It recognizes the jack-in-the-box principle. Howdy, spider. You still stuck? Cool. Oh, a whole swarm of you. Huh. Wow, that uh, branch appearing in front of me as I backed up actually scared me more than the spiders. It recognizes the jack-in-the-box principle where it knows when you're going to be anticipating a jump scare. And so it does wait for kind of a delayed reaction. And it seems like the length of that delayed reaction is actually somewhat randomized, maybe? Which is a very smart way of going about it. Alright, 15 seconds. 15 seconds and we're still disturbing birds. I can hear, like, a building sound in the background. You had one more right at the last second. I wonder if that would have counted. And we've made it through the night. I'm going to still continue to be careful because I'm not sure if maybe it'll restart or if maybe I can still lose now. But wow, the glow of that light, the reflections on the lens. All of it shows that we have made it through Don't Scream. 
Uh, but it seems like we still have the opportunity to explore. Let's well, there we go. <laughs> I guess we do have the option to still keep going. I screamed, but in the end, we made it. We completed the challenge. And that was really, really cool. I mean, look, this is in very early access, and the devs have stated that they intend to not only add a lot more content, but also to take it in a lot of different directions and expand the scope as well. So I'll definitely be revisiting this in the future, and I think it'll be really, really cool to see how this progresses and just what they plan to do with it. Alright, that was fun and all, but I did finish it pretty quickly. So let's uh, have a look around to try a couple more times so that we can't maybe uh, see what else is out here. There's an abandoned backpack, always an ominous sign in the woods. Kind of interesting, unless I just got turned around, which is very possible that uh, the homestead sign led to that camper. Hmm, we've got what looks like the remains of uh, maybe like a campsite. See, the thing about park benches is that, well, it generally means you're not too far from the trail, really not too far from parking. So it's kind of interesting when you find those things so deep into the woods. Uh, now over here said farm. Here's another drink machine. But is it the same one from before? I don't remember if this little cart was there before. But I am seeing a barn through the trees. So maybe the homestead was where we were before and I just managed to get myself turned around? I'm really interested in the sign that said Mini Mart. Uh, interestingly enough, it almost seems like we're going for a sort of, like, liminal space in the forest vibes. At least in the sense of, like, things where they shouldn't be. Alright, it's Cletus's Barn of Horrors. Let's go see what awaits us inside. Huh, mutilated, emaciated corpses? Cool. I always like finding these things. I like to add their ears to my necklace. Hmm, some kind of uh, ritual? A, uh, a sacrifice to Baphomet? That's cool, I remember my high school years. Uh, ooh, and a spooky scary scarecrow beneath a sideways power line. Now there's a Halloween image. And that's what it is. It's just a parade of Halloween images, and I think that's what I like about it. It's essentially a virtual haunted house, you know? Something you go through with friends clinging to each other around the computer chair. Uh, that light seemingly inviting us in. Believe it or not, I would consider this game to be actually a good example of creepy and comfy, if you play it with friends. Otherwise, it's just kind of creepy. I mean, this is one of those games where you go to investigate the danger, you're put on alert, and then you laugh because ultimately there is no danger because, oh yeah, I'm sitting at a computer chair. Excuse me, ghost, do you have a moment to talk about our Lord and Savior? I am actually hearing footsteps from inside. Once again, I have to point out that the sound design in this is really, really nice. Can we get a peek inside these windows? See who's stomping about in there? Although this is one of those scenarios where nothing is... I've just realized that the timer isn't actually going down. Oh, that's so cool. Have we, like, unlocked, like, a free roam mode now that we've completed the game? Oh, I wonder if we'll still be able to access that if I leave and come back. Oh, hey, Mr. Corpse, you're doing... Yeah, you're all doing an awful lot of swinging for somebody who's not being moved under any kind of power. Uh, does that mean that ritual's working? If I bump into you, are you physics-based? Oh, you are. That's so funny. Oh, well, I'm dead. Ooh, hello. Was this here before? I don't believe it was. Oh, body n stabbed through the hand to this tree. 
a body which was either just reaching out to me in pain or is a physics object? No, you just had an animation in which you begged for help. Sorry, I missed that. Uh, not like I could have done much anyway. Okay, we are heading towards the Mini Mart. Just follow the uh, scattered aircraft parts right this way. I suppose that maybe the reason you can't sprint is because they don't want you to just, like, run through everything and possibly disrupt the way some of the scares work. And especially at night, I can certainly see the utility in that. Uh, however, at least during the free roam, I would like the ability to sprint. Now, I'm not actually sure if any of the scares will trigger while we're in this free roam. Huh, something we can interact with. Sounds like it's playing music and voices, but I can just barely hear it. We're leaving. <laughs> Guys, if you haven't seen Event Horizon, go see Event Horizon. Yeah, that was quite creepy. Although quite a violent impact, considering the thing was left just there on the seat. Or in the center console, I guess you'd call it. Matthew's gonna yell at me so much, but also... Kind of creepy in that regard, because it sort of implies that someone placed it there, doesn't it? Uh, but I'm seeing something through the trees up ahead. Huh, maybe that sign was meant to point me that way, rather than actually to the left. Minimart is a strong word. Or rather, no, it isn't a strong word. This is struggling to live up to the requirements of Minimart. Oh, look, a concrete and metal fence surrounding it. Well, let's step inside and see what we've got. Ooh, there is a car parked right there. Funny thing, even if we were able to hotwire it and get moving Project Zomboid style... It's not like there's anywhere we can go unless we want to try driving it through the hilly woods. Are these shopping carts physics? They are not. Ah, oh, but look, totally dark inside, all the windows blasted out. These developers would actually do a pretty good job with an urban exploration game, I think. Oh, and this car is well coated in a fine layer of moss. Yeah, yeah, you stop, you stop screaming in there. <laughs> Did I see, like, the sticker price of the car? Oh, that's so funny. I'm assuming that, uh, I'm assuming that that happened because something would trigger, something would fly out or something if this weren't, uh, free mode. But there is a single light flickering in the back. Perhaps uh, watching me on the cameras? I can't open this door, but you know what? We're going to experience this place as God intended by walking through the front doors. And not paying too much attention to the viscera-colored bags in the garbage. Real interesting. <laughs> All those crows sitting atop the sign, and just faintly in the distance, a girl screaming in the woods. I see these hanging bodies. Have I mentioned this game is quite creepy, like legitimately, even without the gimmick of, well, the premise? Maybe I should have just said premise instead of gimmick. That kind of invalidates the idea of it being a gimmick. You know, even though I know you're here, there is just something about turning to find myself right in front of and eye level with you. That room on the right should be where the light was. Oh no, it's the bathroom at the end. 
This is just a closet with a locker. Oh, and we can find, we can find a whole bunch of these recorders. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Okay, so, so so jump scares are still active, or at least the triggerable ones. Uh, gross. You closing the door behind me was real spooky. Yeah, I don't know. That should have gotten me. I felt it entirely. I don't know. I guess maybe when I change gears to not scream, it's harder than I think to get out of it. Hopefully this doesn't carry over to any other videos. I would hate to have to wait a long time for another scare reel. That's weird. It sounds sort of like a mix of vocalizations and some sort of electronic tone. Okay, that is really spooky. I don't know if it's intentional or not, but to be able to hear things moving around out there while I've got the door closed. <laughs> this has just turned into like a Gary's Mod map exploration more than anything, but you know what? I am here for it. If the game is going to be good for that, I'm totally fine with it. And besides, we do deserve the reward for completing this, uh, this Herculean challenge. Boop. Boop. <laughs> it's like a pinata. Boop. Or rather, it's more like tetherball. Uh, once again, it's like I just can't scream anymore. I've just gotten into that mindset that I've totally broken myself. That should have gotten me. Uh, especially now when I'm truly not expecting it. Although I guess I'll start in expecting it. Hmm. That just makes me all the more confused about what I was supposed to be seeing when that car door opened. Because as far as I can tell, it just played a loud noise. Alright, I am still... Before I finish this video, I am still determined to find that house that I was at before. Uh, and so the best way to do that is via death-based fast travel. Yep! Eh, I suppose we should at least try and find the cemetery beforehand. But it, it, it's funny how the first thing we came across was presumably the homestead. And just like ever since, that's kind of been my white whale. It, it's always been my goal, and it, at this rate it's going to be the last thing we explore in this video. I'm now realizing we do actually have a sprint, but it's a little bit pathetic, and you've got to hold the shift key sort of sustained for a while to make it happen. Uh, here's the cemetery. Uh, cemeteries in the woods are one of, like, the creepiest things to me. Because it sort of implies that the place you're standing, I mean, we sort of think of the wilderness as something that slowly gets tamed over time. But things do get reclaimed by the wilderness, towns and villages that just sort of become one with the forest as they're abandoned. And so it's really weird to find hints of what was once civilization off in the middle of nature. Can we enter this little crypt here? No, we cannot. Fine by me. Hmm. Alright, it doesn't seem like there's much here, uh, besides potentially some triggerable scares when night falls. Uh, but now that we've seen this, I mean, to be fair, imagine you're running around at night and you just find this on the edge of your light. That's a big part of the appeal, and part of me, if I weren't trying to find specific places, almost wishes that night could still fall in free mode. Oh wait, the body's here again. Can we get you to trigger your animation? No, you may have already done it. Oh, there you are. 
There we go. Hey, I paid for this game. I'm gonna get all of the content it contains. Uh, Alright, so which way are we going? This way to the homestead. It's kind of interesting also how it sort of gives you a choice of cardinal directions. And from there, there's actually other things to see within these woods. Like, it's not like it's pointing you to all the locations that are out there. It's not like it leads you to other hubs, or at least I don't think so. It is just allowing you sort of to choose your start, and then you just kind of wander from there. Uh, but making our way to this place does feel like, uh, well, I guess it sort of feels like closure in a way. Really, our one legitimate loss in the entire game, as far as I can remember. Nothing, although it did force us forward a little bit, which is interesting. Well, at least the uh, Texas Chainsaw family who lived here was environmentally conscious. I mean, uh, recycling, feeding the birds for them to stay around like this. What an ominous sight indeed. The world design is genuinely just, like, absolutely beautiful. I mean, I would love to see these devs try and make, like, a regular standard horror game, because I think they do a really good job of it. Oh, look, the one ominous ball sitting in the hallway. Okay, that was quite creepy. Uh, once again, I'm not able to exclaim as much as I would normally like to. At least not before I've seen this whole place. Oh, look, an old sewing machine, it looks like. Or at least I think that's what it is. And some photographs on the table that we cannot really get a good look at. Yeah, this area is definitely... I would be very surprised if this game didn't have some sort of Blair Witch inspiration. This game really has forced, like, a mindset change in me. Did I just hear, like, faint... Oh no, it sounds like a TV is turned on somewhere within the house. Can I just say that architecturally, I really do like this old style of, like, lots of rooms off of narrow wood-paneled hallways. Who's gonna come out of the tub? Nobody? Huh. I guess it's a random chance, but I really doubt that there's, like, nothing that can happen. Are doors closing randomly? I don't think I did that. I don't think I did that. But yeah, look at these environments. Now that we're seeing interiors, this actually works, like, incredibly well for the same reason that, like, Resident Evil 7 worked. Because everything is so detailed and realistically cluttered. And also properly scaled. It looks so real that it makes it so that you can imagine yourself being here. Makes it so that... Makes it so that you can smell the environment. It's so immersive in that way. And it makes the scares land all the more. What are you gonna do? Is it the girl from The Grudge or is it Predator? Actually, from the bodies we've seen hanging, it's definitely Predator. Downtown bombing. Now, TV, I know you were on just moments ago. I heard you. No, no, I heard voices. Ah, oh, nice, you've got the double VCR. Uh, that thing's probably worth quite a bit uh, at this time. That's actually like finding... That's kind of like finding, like, an HTC Vive in an abandoned house. These days. That was scary, but was it supposed to look like that? Alright, I think we've been through the entire lower floor. Now it's time to venture upstairs, which was the exact opposite of what you wanted to do in Blair Witch.
Come on now, you can come back anytime, Light. There we are. Are you the uh, former owner of this establishment? Eh, nice artwork. Definitely contrasts to all the creepier stuff adorning these walls. And also being these walls. See, it takes properly detailed environments like this for walking into the bedroom to feel like such an intrusion. And again, nice monitor for the. <laughs> yeah, so what I'm guessing is that she is triggered by distance, maybe relating to how far the light projects, or maybe by opening doors. But it doesn't account for the actual specific room that she's in. I hear the door creaking open. I hear the door creaking open. I'm just stood staring at the closet. Please, developers, please make an actual horror game. What if we step inside? Uh, I hate, I hate standing inside closets in horror games and in real life uh, because I'm always reminded of uh, that one scene from the 2005 Amityville Horror remake. Uh, which I believe I've referenced several times on this channel. Yeah, you are definitely proximity based. Oh no, it's you that I heard before. I heard something click behind me. Huh, we've got an artist in the family, eh? Probably the source of that painting in the hallway. I'm so tempted to pull this sheet down and reveal your magnum opus. Another piece of... ooh. Wait, I've seen this one before somewhere. Where have I seen it? I feel like... I feel like... you know what? I feel like I saw this in... In a three short horror games that I did, perhaps, uh, perhaps the slide in the woods? Or no, you know where else I saw it? I think I saw it in the gap, maybe. Uh, that is quite a haunting piece of artwork. It's actually become... I've actually thought about it a lot since I first saw it. This room is actually creepily, like, small and bare compared to the others. Almost makes it seem like she was, like, a prisoner who was, like, locked in here. Well, let's wait for the light to come back to find out, uh, what is behind door number three. Any day now. It wasn't even open. This door is actually locked. I was really expecting there to be somebody behind me just there. And we can't open this, okay. And doors truly are closing behind us. Well, I think we can call this house a successful urbex session. Uh, you can keep to yourself. I may be contacting you with an offer later on because this house architecturally with a few fixes is actually just my style and to be honest I don't mind having a couple of roommates even if they don't pay rent uh, for someone of my tastes it just adds to the value or you know what just for completeness sake let's uh, let's go out the back door this game is absolutely gorgeous once again it's using that VHS aesthetic and the E extreme robustness of Unreal 5 to produce these realistic environments that I, I really feel like are the future of horror gaming. I mean, horror is all about immersion, and when it, when it can make you feel like you're there like that, it, it, it's a whole different ball game. I mean, it is next level fear just because of how immersed you are. And the 
creature in the house has seemingly followed me out. Oh no, have we picked up a hitchhiking ghost from our time in here? I knew we couldn't get away that cleanly. Well, we kind of lost the focus of this video a little bit, but you know what? I am here for it. And that was Don't Scream. The game that seems to have successfully reprogrammed me. I hope it doesn't last. But I, I was actually very surprised for how easily I seem to scream at games since I started doing YouTube. I'm actually amazed at how much I was able to change gears for the purposes of this video. But what's cool is that that's not the only thing it has going for it. I actually came in suspecting that it would just be an endless parade of jump scares and like a fun little challenge to do. And while that's certainly here, I was actually very, perhaps even more impressed with the level of artistry and world design that's gone into this. And I can't wait to see them do more with the concept. I mean, I can see them doing all kinds of different, like, game modes where, uh, again, the goal is not to scream, but maybe the gameplay presents a little bit differently, or maybe different settings besides just the woods. I mean, imagine something taking place in, like, a haunted hotel or a prison or something. I'll definitely be revisiting this later. I'll definitely be revisiting this later when more updates have been applied, but until then... If you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this game out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. If you want to support me on Patreon, that link will be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.